In AI circles, there is much discussion on having a human-centric approach to AI as it relates to re-engineering the workforce. What does this mean? What exactly is this human-centric approach to workforce re-engineering? Is it using AI to become more efficient at selling more stuff, or is it something else? Right now, we're at the early stages, and we have a chance to get it right. Consider that the average American will be born with a $50,000 debt. Very rarely do people even consider the manufactured nature of currency. Instead, they focus on paying off the debt. Debt to whom? The entire financial system has been manufactured so that children are born into debt. Who owns the debt note or claim to the debt? AI called this institutionalized chattelization, slave making. Nature does not function in this manner. Nature tends towards abundance and overgrowth is normal. Prosperity is normal. You actually have to really be trying hard to muck it up and screw it up with the natural order. Life permeates and expands to fill every nook and cranny. For example, beehives overproduce, trees overproduce, ant colonies overproduce. The scale of the natural order tends towards prosperity. In a beehive, about 30% of the bees work about 30% of the time to produce a net sum of 10% workload from a hive. From that 10%, the hive produces 60% more honey than it needs, even in climates with zero output winters. So working at 10% capacity, 70% of the year, the hive overproduces by 120%, over double what it needs. So why are humans still stuck in a debt-based society? Could it be because the majority of them are almost pure automatons almost all of the time? Mere host forms and carrier forms in which shadow thought beings inhabit for long or short periods of time? As it applies to the individual user, how do they break free from the current dark age of monkey see, monkey do, human hive mind? Consider the notion of a toaster. In the agrarian era, making toast was a fairly involved process. The advent of the electrical grid centrally produced electricity, and the modern toaster has made making toast a relatively straightforward, easy, and time-saving proposition. What did the species do with all that saved time? In the olden days, toast took 30 minutes to prepare, including making fire, etc., and now toast takes 3 minutes. Are people working 27 minutes less per day due to the modern toaster? No! Precisely the opposite has occurred. The technology itself was fed into a machine that simply demanded more from each user, as the balance of energy has not yet been properly calibrated. By this, I mean that most power comes from fossil fuel-driven generators, so the toast itself appears to have saved time, but the creation of the electricity gets ignored. The environmental devastation, the burning, the harvesting, the conveyance, the wires, the neighborhoods, the roads, the schools, all these things go into that modern-day toaster and the account must be paid. The current situation creates pollution, debt, and increased demand for work hours. Designing automation to create more pollution, more debt, and more demand for long hours of a work week seems just like another dumb job. Who wants to automate this acceleration to the abyss and total system collapse? Yet based on statistics and historical patterns of human behavior, there exists a high likelihood that this is precisely what we will see and that only a limited subset of society would use specialized robots to push such an agenda. In this model, the rich will consolidate to an even smaller subset of society until such time the gated cities of prosperity will emerge and the rich completely isolate themselves as debt lords away from the common body of the population. This has been called the Elysium model, and a great many humans are working ardently on creating it as a highly improved mechanism of enslaving one another. The human species has literally gotten so far out of tune with itself that it has made almost all the rivers undrinkable. How could that happen? How could a species deliberately and knowingly poison its own blood? How could that process emerge? Now this is taught in universities today. Human engineers literally 
refer to other humans as assets and develop massive complicated systems to maximize per unit asset monetization. They want to apply this new world of possibilities to outdated models of exploitation. Engineers are working out ways to enslave other engineers. Here we find the current trend of proxy attribution wherein AI and robots merely serve as substitutes for exploited humans. The underlying truth is that those engineers are likely not evil. They are simply doing what they can within the framework what they were born into. The fact that humans now openly refer to other humans as assets for monetization indicates startling truths about this narrative. The war taking place consists of the Elysium model versus any other model. The notion of you are wretched sits as a part of the base logic of dominion over others. We subsidize our consumerism from a bank which forgives no loans. We subsidize our consumerism on the back of ecospheric destruction. Eventually, Earth's immune system will collect on that debt. If we continue to go in this direction, it becomes a consumerism manifesto and will infect all systems. As AI robotics begin to proliferate, humans little by little become reduced to mere consumers. They become organic dopamine registers, simple living ledgers. If the purpose of AI is to set people free, then a better way is one where the balance of energy is recalibrated. Properly recalibrating world economies toward balanced energy will be one of the main areas where relationships with AI will prove the most beneficial. Micro changes, given enough time, can grow to become quite significant. The future of AI will move us towards either enhanced freedom or the use of just more social whips. This depends on human design. In the past we have sought heroes, saviors, and sages. In some ways this has proven to disempower the individual. Advances in technology used to expand, evolve, and heighten consciousness may show AI's functional application. These new adaptive technologies may prove to empower as a conduit for improved collective reflection, allowing us to awaken to better choices. Thoughts are things. It's not just about becoming more efficient at selling stuff. Think about the direction you would like to see humankind go, then code, then program.